Hello, it's Miss Sarah from the Lewiston Public Library. Welcome to Amphibian Week for our Tales and Tales summer reading program. So today, we're gonna do some science. You see, I've got my lab coat on. So first, let's talk about what an amphibian is. Amphibians are small vertebrates that need water or a really moist environment to survive. Now this group includes frogs and salamanders and toads and newts, and they can all breathe and absorb water through their very thin skin. Now to warn predators, the most toxic amphibians are also the most brightly colored, like the poison dart frog. And like reptiles, amphibians are cold-blooded. So let's talk first about a life cycle of amphibians. Let's talk specifically about a frog. So the process in which a tadpole turns into an adult frog is called metamorphosis. So the first stage is that they lay eggs and they can lay hundreds of eggs. And within a few days, the egg develops into tadpoles. Now the tadpoles live completely underwater and over about 24 hours, the tadpole develops into a frog with back legs. And this means that almost every organ has to change from a tadpole to go from living in water to actually living on land as an adult frog. At this point, the tadpole's gills have disappeared. They're turning from a froglet with, froglet with hind legs uh, into a full adult. And so uh, now their lungs are enlarging, they can breathe air, and that means that they're actually ready to leave the water and live on land. So once the tail disappears, it will become an adult frog. Now to celebrate our amphibian friends, uh, here is Mr. Frog, say hi Mr. Frog. Now he is made out of Play-Doh. Uh, and But what you may not know is that this is special Play-Doh. This is actually color changing Play-Doh. So it'll change colors when I apply heat to it. So let's put Mr. Frog, he's a little cold. So we're gonna put him under the lamp over here. We're gonna turn on the lamp. So it's nice and warm and toasty for him. All right, he's getting nice and toasty and warm. Let's leave him under there. So now we're gonna see if he changes color. So what does this have to do with amphibians? Now it's because amphibians are cold-blooded. Hmm, what does that mean? So people usually think that warm-blooded animals are warm on the inside and cold-blooded animals are cold on the inside, but that's not necessarily the case. So warm-blooded animals are called endotherms. Endo meaning inside, therm meaning heat. Uh, so those are like mammals and birds and us. And so we can actually regulate our body temperature no matter what temperature it is outside. Now cold-blooded animals are called ectotherms. Ecto meaning outside and then therm meaning heat. And so like most reptiles and amphibians and fish, their body temperature relies on the outside environment to maintain their body temperature. So if it's cold outside where they are, the animal will be cold. If it's hot outside, the animal will be warm. Now many cold-blooded animals really like it hot. So some monitor lizards, they love temperatures up to 120 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really, really warm. They're at their ideal body temperature. That's called their thermal optimum. And then there's other like salamanders. They actually like temperatures like 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. I like that temperature too. And so sometimes salamanders can actually be seen swimming in frozen ponds. Oh my goodness. Now ectotherms rely on the outside temperature of their environment to reach their thermal optimum. So 
whether it be high in the case of like monitor lizards or if it's cooler like with salamanders. And so of course they get hot or cold just like we do. But instead of sweating or panting or shivering like we do when it's hot or cold, they actually have to move from place to place. When not at their thermal optimum, their metabolisms are actually not at their best. So if it's too hot, they're gonna seek places to cool down. If it's too cool, they're gonna find a sunny area to warm up a little bit. Now, should we check if Mr. Frog has changed colors to see if he's warmed up, shall we? Oh my goodness, look at him. What color is he turned to? He was all blue. What color do you see? I see green. Do you see the green over here? Yeah. So he's warmed up. I think he might be a little too warm. So we're going to put him out here so that he cools off just a little bit. You can make this Play-Doh at home as well. So first you're going to get a bowl and you're going to mix together two cups of flour, half a cup of salt, two tablespoons of cream of tartar, and then you're going to make it mix in the specialty ingredients. This is called thermochromic pigment. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, and this is actually what changes the color inside the Play-Doh. So this one is actually telling me it's gonna change from blue to green. And that's why our frog changed from blue to green when we put it under heat. And so you're gonna mix in about three to five teaspoons of this pigment inside of your flour mixture. Mix it up really good. And then you're gonna get another bowl and you're gonna mix your wet ingredients. So you're gonna mix in three fourths cup of water, uh, hot water, so make sure it's hot. Uh, so be careful, make sure you have an adult help you. And then also two tablespoons of, of cooking oil, like canola oil or olive oil. And so you're gonna mix those inside. And then you're gonna take your two, your dry ingredients and your wet ingredients, and you're gonna mix them together. And you're gonna, this is where it's gonna get really messy and you can use your hands and make sure, so mix them all together and it'll make your Play-Doh. Now, if it's a little too crumbly, you can always add some water into it. Uh, and so then you're gonna let it sit for uh, like three to five minutes and you'll see that the color changes, which is really cool. I also wanted to show you that we made, what animal is this one? It's a snake, that's right. Wait, Miss Sarah, snakes aren't amphibians. Why would we make a snake? So snakes, right, they aren't amphibians, but like amphibians, they are also cold-blooded. And so a big difference between reptiles and amphibians are that amphibians don't have scales. And so let's see if we can get some of our color changing on our snake. All right, let's check on Mrs. Snake. Oh, look, she changed color too. She changed from green to a lighter color. Ooh, I think she's a little warm now too. Let's put her with Mr. Frog. Let's check on Mr. Frog. Oh, look at that. Back to his perfect little temperature. Right, Mr. Frog? All right. Thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you at the Lewiston Public Library really soon.